Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, chapter number 2, entitled Hiranyakashi Pu, King of the Demons. Text number 59 and 60. I'll just read 59, there's no purport. Yamitad upayakyaya tatravan tatradayata Jnana yohi suyaknashya chakruryat samparayikam Translation, after instructing all the foolish residents of sh relatives of suyagna, Yamaraj, in the form of a boy, disappeared from their vision. Then the relatives of King Suyagna performed the ritualistic funeral ceremony. Now text number 60, which is on the board. Atasho chama yuyam Param chatmanam evava Kaatma ka paro vaktra Suya par akyam evava Swapara biniveshena Vinakyaknyena dehinam Atasho chamayuyam Param chatmanam evava Kaatma ka paro vaktra Sweya parakya evava Swapara Veshena Vinagyagyena Dehinam Atasho Chamayuyam Param Chatmanam Evava Kaatmaka Paro Vaktra Sviya parakya evava Svapara biniveshena Vinagyagyena dehinam Ata Therefore Shochata Lament for Ma Do not Yuyam, all of you, param, another, cha, and atmanam, yourself, eva, certainly, va, or, ka, who, atma, self, ka, 
who, para, other, va, or, atra, in this material world. Sviya, one's own, parakya, for others, eva, indeed, va, or, svapara abhiniveshena, consisting of absorption in the bodily concept of oneself and others. Vina, besides, agyanena, the lack of knowledge, dehinam, of all the embodied living entities. Translation. Therefore, none of you should be aggrieved for the loss of the body, whether your own or those of others. Only in ignorance does one make bodily distinctions, thinking, who am I? Who are the others? Who is mine? What is for others? You can all repeat. Therefore, Therefore none of you, none of you should, be should be aggrieved for the loss of the body, the of the body. whether your own, your own or those of others. Only in, Only in ignorance does one make bodily distinctions. Make bodily distinctions. Thinking, who am I? Thinking, who, am I? Who, are who are the others? What is mine? What is, mine? What is, for, others? What is for others? Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. In this material world, the conception of self-preservation is the first law of nature. According to the, this misconception, one should be interested in his personal safety and should then consider society, friendship, love, nationality, community and so on, which have all developed because of the bodily conception of life and a lack of knowledge of the spirit soul. This is called ajnana. As long as human society is in darkness and ignorance, men will continue to make huge arrangements in the bodily conception of life. This is described by Prahlad Maharaj as Bharam. In the materialistic conception, modern civilization makes enormous arrangements for huge roads, houses, mills and factories. And this is man's conception of the advancement of civilization. People do not know, however, that at any time they themselves may be kicked out of the scene and forced to accept bodies that have nothing to do with these enormous houses, palaces, roads and automobiles. Therefore, when Arjuna was thinking in terms of his bodily relationship with his kinsmen, Krishna immediately chastised him, saying, Kutastwa kashmalamidam vishame samupast samupastitam, anaryam justam. This bodily conception of life is befitting the anaryas, the non-aryans, one who, or those who are not advanced in knowledge. An Aryan civilization is a civilization advanced in spiritual knowledge, not merely by stamping oneself an Aryan, does one become an Aryan. To keep oneself in the deepest darkness concerning spiritual knowledge and at the same time claim to be an Aryan is a non-Aryan position. In this connection, Sri Madhvacharya quotes as follows 
from the Brahma Vaivarta Purana. Ka atma ka para iti dehadi apekshaya. Nahi dehadabir atma shan nacha satrur udiritaha. Ato daihika vridova shaiva kim pariojanam. Yastu deha gato jiva sahi nasham nagachati. Tata shatru vrido cha swa nashe shochanam kata. Dehadi yantirikoto tu jivi sho pratijanata. Ata atma vridis tu vasudevi ratistira. Shatru nashas tatagyana. Nasho Nanya Katanchana. The purport is that as long as we are in this human form of body, our duty is to understand the soul within the body. The body is not the self. We are different from the body. And therefore, there is no question of friends, enemies, or responsibilities in terms of the bodily conception of life. One should not be very anxious about the body's changing from childhood to boyhood, from boyhood to old age, and then to apparent annihilation. Rather, one should be very seriously concerned about the soul within the body, and how to release the soul from the material clutches. The living entity within the body is never annihilated. Therefore, one should surely know that whether one has many friends or many enemies, his friends cannot help him, and his enemies cannot do him any harm. One should know that he is a spirit soul, Aham Brahmasmi, and that the constitutional position of the soul is unaffected by the changes of the body. In all circumstances, everyone as a spirit soul must be a devotee of Lord Vishnu and should not be concerned with bodily relationships, whether with friends or with enemies. One should know that neither we ourselves nor our enemies in the bodily conception of life are ever killed. Omagyana timarandasya gyananjana shalakaya chaksurun militanye na tasmai shri gurave namaha. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Scha Hey Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanustate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha kaupata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhaevacha patita nam pavane bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo nama nama om vishnu padaya krishna pristaya bhutale shrimati bhakti vedanta swami niti namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine 
Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desatar Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> so we're hearing Haranyakashipu give instruction to his relatives, particularly his mother, Diti, and his sister-in-law, right? Because the brother of Haranyakashipu, Haranyaksha, had been killed by Lord Varaha. So they were feeling very sorry. They lost this dear member of the family. So Haranyakashipu is giving nice instruction, very philosophical words. Of course, Haranyakashipu had a very good father, Kashyapa, right? He could certainly instruct him. Uh, but still Haranyakashipu is of course a demon. He is not a devotee. And so it's interesting to note that demons also can speak philosophy sometimes. And particularly in this kind of situation that is known as uh, Smasana Vairagya, right? There's different kinds of vairagya, right? Markata vairagya, monkeys. The monkeys are very renounced, right? And some people behave like monkeys. The re renunciation is like that. So smasana vairagya is renunciation at the crematorium. When somebody dies, when we go to the funeral, then everybody is very philosophical. And so similarly, Haranyakashipu is feeling philosophically inclined. He's speaking these words, consoling the relatives, telling them, you know, we're not the body, we're the soul. So the fact that the demons can also speak philosophy is described to us in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, in 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is describing divine and demoniac nature. Pavritim cha, nivritim cha, janana vidura sura, nasocham napisacharo, nasocham teshu vijate. The nature of the demonic person is they do not know what is what should be done and what should not be done. Prabhupada explains the Krishna consciousness movement is for teaching what to do and what not to do. What should be the pavriti and the nivriti. Pavriti means the path of enjoyment and nivriti, the path of renunciation. What should we accept and what should we give up? Srila Prabhupada, Jai Sri Sri Gornitai, Krishna Balaram, Radha, Sun, Radha Sham Sunda. So, Srila Prabhupada describes how he came to the Western countries and he was guiding the young people. The young people who were there, their pavriti and nivriti was all wrong. They were eating everything and doing everything they shouldn't do, right? And maybe not only the Western people, we see it in India also today as well. India is hardly any different from the West these days. They also, here in India, ordinary Indian people also don't know what the pavriti or nevriti should be. They have to be educated, they have to be guided what to do and what not to do. So, in Prabhupada's time, he was preaching to these Western men and they were accustomed to 
drugs and illicit sex and meat eating and everything and Prabhupada was guiding them no meat fish eggs no intoxication no gambling no illicit sex Prabhupada was guiding them instructing them changing the poverty and nivriti this is the purpose of the Krishna consciousness movement to give people proper knowledge to come from the position of Ajnana to Jnana to know what is the proper behavior in the demonic condition of life asura, Asurik Sampat then we don't know what is cleanliness we have no standards of truthfulness we don't have proper behavior but by being guided by Krishna consciousness movement in the form of Srila Prabhupada's teachings particularly his books then our life gets greatly changed but the demons also as we said they can also speak philosophy in this in re relation to this verse of 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita uh, they d give the story of how a young boy died one day and when the young boy died naturally the family members and relatives were all very disturbed and distressed and they were preparing for the funeral ceremony but at that time a jackal suddenly appeared and the jackal began to speak to all the people and tell them yes this boy had very wonderful qualities it is right that you're mourning the departure of this young child he had such noble qualities he was a very fine character it is really a loss to the world I think you should all go and contemplate and discuss his qualities and come back tomorrow and you can do the funeral for him don't do the funeral now come back tomorrow the jackal was speaking like this but then a vulture came and then the vulture began to speak against the, the, the preaching of the jackal and say and the, the, the vulture began to describe that the body is different from the soul the boy is dead now his soul is gone so the body is finished you don't need to perform any ritual for this body you just go you can depart you don't have to do anything so both the jackal and the vulture they were speaking philosophy to suit their own ends because the jackal can only eat at night so the jackal wanted them to go come back tomorrow that way he can eat the body in the night and the vulture can only eat in the day so the vulture was telling the people just go away you don't need to perform any funeral not necessary the vulture wanted to eat the body now so they were both speaking philosophy but their philosophy was for their own sense gratification so this is a demonic way they will speak nice words but the purpose is for their sense gratification they want to enjoy we want to enjoy the material world is all based on this principle Prabhupada said self-preservation the jackal wanted to eat the body the vulture also wanted to eat the body everyone is thinking how I can enjoy we're not thinking about others first we think about ourselves material principle of existence is based on the struggle for existence and the survival of the fittest yeah. those living entities who have legs uh, they eat the animals which have no legs and then the, those living entities which no, have no arms they are food for those living entities with arms the weak are the subsistence for the strong one living entity is food for another 
This is the material principle of existence. We will live off others. But Prabhupada analyzes this phrase, survival of the fittest. What does it mean to survive? Survive means no more death. If you are dying, then you're not surviving. The real purpose of survival is to co conquer, conquer over birth and death. Who is actually fit? The fittest. Who is actually fit? You know, we see people, they go jogging every morning, they lift the weights, they do their exercises, they do pranayama, they want to live long time, right? The nose pressing yogis, they will live a long time pressing the nose. But are they fit? They still have to die. Who does not die? Srimad Bhagavatam says, Ayur Hariti Vaipum Sam. Mm, Ayur Hariti Vaipum Sam. That as the sun is rising and setting every day, it is reducing the duration of life of all living entities, except for those who are using their time to glorify the Lord. Those who have reciting the pastimes and the activities of the Lord, then they're actually deathless. They are Amara. Because they're dedicated to the service of Krishna. So this is the purpose of the Krishna Consciousness Movement, to give association to people so that they can also hear about Krishna. They can also become fit. They can also survive, conquer over birth and death. But if they waste their time just simply uh, in these endeavors, which Prabhupada uses the word in the purport, he said, Pralad Maharaj, quotes Pralad Maharaj, Baram, Baram. Eh? Uh, it is stated in one of the verses, one of Pralad's prayers to Lord Nasringadev, when he's offering prayers to Pralad, to pacify Lord Nasringadev, he says, Maya, Maya, uh, Asocham, uh, Maya Sukaya Udvato Vimudam, Maya Sukaya Baram Udvato Vimudam. The verse is that Prahlad Maharaj is love, Maya Sukaya is, Prahlad is saying, I am not afraid of uh, the miseries of the material world. He said, I can go anywhere in this world because wherever I go, I will simply chant the glories of the Lord. So I'm not worried about myself. I have nothing to be worried about. But I am concerned with love for those people who are spending their time and endeavoring for all of these things of the material world. This baram means endeavoring to maintain a big home, a big factory, or a big empire, a big institute, like that Mati in material world people dedicate their life for maintaining all of these material establishments. But ultimately they're all doomed to crumble, right? Great empires, the Roman Empire, the British Empire, or the American Empire, this, they, they all crumble one after another in the course of time, right? It is inevitable. They cannot succeed. So Prahlad Maharaj said, I am lamenting with love for these people who are trying so hard to maintain all of these things. So much effort they undergo to build these big roads, just like coming from Delhi, coming on this uh, Yamuna Highway, is it? The, the express, how much labor, 
how much expense, how much endeavor they go to, to build these big roads, to construct these big networks of communication. Is it worth the effort? Ultimately, they will, they will all crumble. They are all doomed to failure. Big uh, airports and railway lines everywhere. How much labor, how much endeavor people go to con con to construct all of these things. This is described in the Bhagavad Gita as Ugra Karma. Ugra Karma. It is not actually advancement of civilization, but it's a, a deteri deterioration in civilization. Real civilization means the Aryan civilization. One who is Aryan, he understands the real duty of life. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada quotes this verse from second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Tukastva kashmalamidam vishapte samupashtitam anaryam is where from where did these impurities come from arjun these words are not fit befitting someone who is an aryan arjuna was expected to be aryan but he was speaking like a non aryan because he was talking on the bodily platform he was talking about his bodily considerations. And so this is the ignorance of the material world. Everyone is in the bodily condition of life. We, are, we have forgotten who I am or why I am here. We're simply thinking the body. Make the body happy and we will be happy. But we know. It's all a failure. We can never succeed. How long you can make the body happy? Very difficult. Very easy to make the body, to put the body in distress. One little cut, one little thorn in the foot. Oh, so much pain, so much trouble. To, but to make the body happy is so difficult. Real happiness, of course, is not on the platform of the body. We want people to understand that real happiness is on the platform of the soul. We do not know what is real happiness. We have this illusion that satisfying the body is happiness. We dream about happiness. We do not know what is the reality. Happiness is not here in this world. Of course, we might say, well, this, the, this, we're not in this world. If you're actually in Vrindavan, then you're happy. But how many of us are actually in Vrindavan? How many of us are actually seeing the Dham? You, to actually come to that platform. You do not enter the Dham just by buying the ticket. We have to change the consciousness. So just simply being here in Vrindavan is an opportunity to come to the higher platform. But it does not, it's not guaranteed that everyone walking around here in Vrindavan is seeing the spiritual world. You have to be qualified. This holy dham is not different from Krishna. To see Krishna, how many people can actually see Krishna? Of course, we should come to be seen by Krishna, not to see. Our duty is to be seen. But Krishna also says, he is never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. In the same way, this holy dham is never manifest to the foolish and the unintelligent. What is manifest is the misery of the material world. 
Therefore, the real devotees, they don't return to this world, but they go back to Krishna. They go to the supreme destination. So Krishna consciousness has to be awakened. It's, the process is very simple. Hearing and chanting. Haranyakashipu was beginning the process here for his relatives. He was trying to bring them out of the bodily conception of life. We also need to get out of the bodily conception of life. It's more difficult today. Very cold this morning. <laughs> you can easily get in the bodily conception of life. The material body is here with us. We have to purify it. And the process by engagement in Krishna consciousness. By hearing, chanting, the more we become absorbed in these activities, then we can transcend all the miseries of life. Right? We quoted the verse, Ayur Hariti Vai Pumsa. But Uttama Sloka Vartaya, one who is constantly chanting the glories of Uttama Sloka, then there's no birth and death. That is the glories. That is real fitness. That, that is a real glorious position. That person, he is actually going to survive. He is really fit. One who is absorbed in chanting the glories of the Lord. So we want to develop that attraction for hearing and chanting the glories of Krishna, the glories of that one Supreme Lord who is the controller of everyone who's situated in everyone's heart. And we have to develop that taste by constant practice. Just like controlling the mind in the Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna was describing yoga to Arjuna, then Arjuna said, oh, very difficult, oh, very difficult to do this. My mind is more restless than the wind. But Krishna said, you can do it by practice and by detachment. So the, the important thing is practice and detachment. But then, even more important is to get that association with the devotee. When you can get the association with the great devotee, then even a fraction of a moment's association with the devotee can free us from the attraction to the material world. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur gives an example from the Smriti Shastra. He talks about charity. He said, when you give charity in the material world, then you can be sure it will come back. Even if you, if you give charity to an uneducated Brahmin, in other words, somebody who is not a Brahmin, he doesn't have the Brahminical qualities, then it will come back an equal amount in the next life. But if you give charity to a half-educated Brahman, then it will come back double the amount in the next life. And if you give charity to a fully educated Brahman, then it will come back a hundred times in the next life. And if you give charity to a Vedava, Vedavaga, somebody who has actually understood the purpose behind all the Vedas, then it will come back an unlimited amount of times. So in this way, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that even a fraction of a second of association with the pure devotee, it can free one from birth and death. It can guarantee, guarantee one eternal life. That is the benefit of association with the pure devotee. That, that frac even the fraction of the second. But we have to, of course, take advantage of that association. I saw Srila Prabhupada one time, London Temple, Bury Place. Prabhupada was coming into the temple room and Two young men had came, and one young man, one of the young men, he was in a wheelchair. He was crippled. And they looked at Prabhupada appealing. 
They could understand Prabhupada was a very great spiritual master. So they were coming to him. Swamiji, can you do something? Can you please help this boy? He's in this condition. He's greatly handicapped physically. Prabhupada simply sne sneered at them and said, I can do nothing. Prabhupada did not play any games with them. Prabhupada explains, the business of the spiritual master is not to cure disease or to give them some material blessings. But the business of the pure devotee is to take away their distress from the material world, to free them from the attachment to the body. It is out of ignorance that people think the spiritual master is meant for satisfying their material desires. They think the spiritual master is like a doctor or sometimes they think he's an astrologer. These are all very bad misconceptions of what is the actual duty of the spiritual teachers. What is their real job? Their duty is simply to give Krishna consciousness. That Krishna consciousness, that is the matchless gift, right? Prabhupada opened his store in New York, matchless gifts. There is nothing which can equal the gift of Krishna consciousness. Of course, this was appreciated by Dhruva Maharaj after he'd been doing his meditation in the forest there. After six months, he was able to see the Lord. But then when the Lord came to him, then Dhruva Maharaj said, Swamin Kutartosmi Varam Nayachi. No, I don't want anything. Now I'm fully satisfied. I have everything. I don't want anything. I've got everything now because he had seen the Lord. So he did not want, initially Dhruva wanted the great kingdom, but when he got the Lord, then he understood, this is much better than any kingdom. Looking for a kingdom was like looking for pieces of broken glass. So we should be very careful not to make these mistakes in our practice of spiritual life. We should understand very clearly what is the goal. The goal is to develop our love for Krishna. Prem punarto mahan, right? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught the goal of life is to develop love for Krishna. We have to transform that love for the family, love for the society, for our community. We have to transform that love to love for Krishna. The love is being misdirected due to, due to the bodily condition of life. But it can all be changed by the process of devotional service, which begins with hearing and chanting. We have to do all of these regulated activities, regularly coming together like we are doing here every morning. We come for the Mongo Arti, we take part in this morning program. All of the elements of Panchanga Bhakti, the five elements of Bhakti which are so powerful, they're all there within our morning program. And when we take advantage of that spiritual atmosphere, then quickly our consciousness can be transformed. We can begin to appreciate more. What is the soul? What is our spiritual consciousness? And we become less interested in the body. The material demands are put aside. We forget about them. Just like the hungry man, by eating food, his hunger becomes satisfied. But the hungry man doesn't just eat once. 
he eats a full meal. He will eat regularly. In the same way, we want Krishna consciousness, we have to constantly practice, we have to constantly endeavor, we have to regularly hear and chant. It is not a sporadic thing. We have to be very eager to achieve the result that greed to get Krishna consciousness is required. That greediness, Prabhupada uh, coins of, of the Krishna consciousness movement. Kutastva uh, Kashma, that this loyam, tatra loyam mulam ekalam, janma, janma koti sukriterna labyate. That this, this loyam, this greediness, this has to be there for our Krishna consciousness. Without that intense greed, then we cannot achieve the result. If we are, you're thinking, well, yeah, tomorrow, next day, next week, next life, we have to have that intense greed. We want to achieve it. We want it very badly. Then only can be achieved. That is the price. Right? In the market, you can bargain. You will ask. We will ask, what is the cheapest price? Give me cheaper price. You go to Loy Bazaar, nobody will just pay the price. Everybody will say, come se come, kidne rupiya. Right? What's the cheapest price you can give me? And so, in Krishna consciousness, there's no bargaining. There's only one price. And that the price is that intense desire to achieve it. If we don't have that intense desire, that greediness to get it, then we, we, we're not paying the price. We won't get it. We will not achieve it. We want to be very conscious of this. So, taking advantage of every moment of our time in this human form of life, using it very carefully, very intently to hear and to chant and to come to that level of Krishna consciousness. So this is our goal. We pray that we can all be successful in this. We will ask if there's any questions, Maharaj. Badrai Narayan Maharaj. Very nice class, Maharaj. But my question is this, you're saying that, it, you know, what is the use, you're striving but still dying, it's all a failure, well, hang on a minute, I see you Hare Krishna people that are using our roads, I see you in our airports, so, you know, you're criticizing, but you're, I see you take advantage of the road. Okay, I'll answer that question the way Prabhupada did, just like Prabhupada, somebody said to him, you flew here, you used the airplane. If I did not use them, then they would be completely useless. Because, it, because we are devotees. We are only, the only ones entitled to use these things. Because we are using them for Krishna. Otherwise they're useless. Everybody else is using them for their sense gratification. But we are using them in the renounced manner. We are using them for the service of Krishna. Right? We're coming here for the service of Krishna. We're going everywhere for the preaching of the message of Krishna. Otherwise they're useless. I have another question. You have created a false dynamic, you Vaishnavas. You're saying, oh, we're eternal and we should go back to Krishna and therefore this world is temporary and miserable. I don't accept that dynamic. There's no God, there's no soul. And I'm just going along with life. Okay, well, okay, it's temporary. I accept that. It's like a river, I'm just 
flowing with it. There's some happiness, there's some distress, and that's just life. And because I've learned to accept that, I just accept whatever happiness comes, whatever difficulty will come. I'm not in anxiety about it. I don't create this dynamic that, well, I should be in a better place by coming. This is the way it is. I live with it. I take the bitter with the sweet, and life goes on, and I'm content. I'm, I'm as content as you. Now okay, so become a dog in your next life. We, we'll give you our blessings, right? You know, what can we say? Somebody talks like that, we just say, go ahead, you know. You, you have nothing to live for, you have no purpose in life. So, you will take birth in so many different species of life, you have to go on suffering the miseries. You know, you're like a person who has a disease, he doesn't want to take any treatment, doesn't want to cure it. But if you know that if you know there's some cure, then you could, you should accept the medicine. Why suffer unnecessarily? You say, oh, take the bitter with the sweet. Oh, you enjoy suffering? Then go ahead. You're suffering, so yeah, you, you, you know you have. You, you give me your money. Give me your car keys. Give me your, you know, give up everything. You like suffering, so it doesn't matter if it's all one, it's all the same to you. So give, give me all your wealth, hand it all over to me. You know, you talk like this, but when you suffer, you're the one who comes crying to everybody. When the miseries come, you, you will be the first one to come. Oh, I'm suffering so much, please help me. When you have some pain in the body, you go to the doctor, you try to cure it. When you're in trouble for money, you come looking for a loan. When you have a family problem with your wife, you come looking, oh, come and help me. I'm t can you talk to my wife for me? You're the, f you're the one with the problems. When you have problems, you try to solve your problems. That's an intelligent person. So if you just say, take the bitter with the sweet, that's not very intelligent. You'll end up in a lot of suffering, more and more suffering because you're never trying to solve any of the problems of life. We have to recognize we have problems. Okay, that's intelligent person, understand. I have problems. What to do about it? Then, okay, here's the solution. Krishna consciousness is teaching us how we can solve the problem. But if you don't have faith, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Ashradadana purusha dharma shyasya parantapa those who are not faithful on the path of devotional service, then they will remain in the wheel of birth and death. It's all right, you stay in the world of birth and death. That's your decision. If you're happy to become a tree and become a dog and go through all the 8,400,000 species of life, that's your problem, that's your decision, not ours. We can bless you. Yeah, become a nice tree, become a good dog. <laughs> live, <laughs> live happily in your dog body. Yes. Oh. No, we have a problem, we have to deal with it. So, intelligent person thinks how to deal with the problems of life. Krishna is answering, Krishna is guiding us. Just like your car, you have a problem with the car. You don't know much about car, you get a mechanic. And the mechanic comes and immediately he knows, he listens to the engine, oh, okay, just do this. Uh, he makes a few adjustments and before you know, then the car's ready. You get the expert mechanic. In the same way, you get the devotee, the devotee to come. The devotee comes and he guides us, he tells us what to do what we have to chant, what we have to hear about, and all the problems are solved. So, we can see the medicine works, right? This is the panacea, the medicine for all disease, all material life. Only one cure, Krishna consciousness. So take that medicine. Hare Krishna. Question? Huh? Thank you.
we shouldn't ask anything from our special master or something. Something our special master knows that what is the requirement, and if it is helping us in that requirement, so what you say about that one? Without asking, he is knowing that I have a problem there, and it solves the problem. Well, the, you, you can ask your spiritual master how to engage in the service of Krishna. But we should not ask him like a doctor or like a business advisor, business consultant. Oh, Guru Maharaj, how should I invest my money so I make more money? <laughs> what shares do I need to buy? That's not the business of the spiritual master. You shouldn't ask the spiritual man, Oh Guru Maharaj, I have this pain in my back, what should I do? It's not the doctor. He'll tell you, you should give up that body. That's what you should do. <laughs> give up the body. And, and he's teaching you the process to give up the body. So that's the business of the spiritual master. Yeah. The spiritual master may know about your economic conditions, but that's not his business. His real business is Krishna consciousness, giving Krishna. So we should take advantage of the spiritual master for that purpose, not for any other purpose. Yeah? Okay. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki.